We lay to heart to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the miracles, for the signs and the wonders, thank you. No man can do this except God be with him. For your abiding presence, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the keys that opens us up to a new dimension is thanksgiving, where we become thoughtful enough to say thank you, Jesus. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life. Be glorified in my life. Be glorified. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Lord, you get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Father, transform my life tonight by the power of your word. Someone pray. He balanda skada pretege beleko shia da balakusia. Transform my life by the power of your word. You're about to hear a word that will lift you. You're about to hear a word that will transform you indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just sensed in my heart before we sit to just speak a word of encouragement to someone. You're here and you're wondering, can God make a table in the wilderness? You're here and you're wondering, how will I attend to the bills and the issues just when the door is about to open the devil can lie to you and say is this what the faithfulness of god looks like let me encourage you by the spirit you know the way the realm of the spirit works five minutes to your breakthrough it will still not look like it don't give up on god because he won't give up on you Oh, 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 he said, oh, 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 he said, oh. Every time you feel discouraged, forget about yourself and focus on him. Listen, I've taught you here that you can fail by yourself but you cannot fail with God. Alone you can fail for sure, but you cannot fail with God. Bless our hearts tonight, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated in God's glorious presence. Always a joy to have us around. We bless our global family. Thank you for connecting with us. Hallelujah just um two or three announcements very quickly and then we'll get to the word there's so much to do tonight by the grace of god 
next week, Sunday 31st, will be a miracle service for the month of October. Please invite everybody around this city. Let them know that Jesus still saves, Jesus still heals, Jesus still delivers. He is still releasing men from the shackles of darkness. Make that sacrifice to invite everyone. Praise the name of the Lord. So, 31st October, 5 p.m. on the dot, we start here. And then, um, finally, to reiterate that our graduation ceremony for our Koinonia School of Ministry students, again, will be on Sunday, November the 14th. November the 14th. Are you celebrating our School of Ministry students? We'll be graduating our School of Ministry students officially November the 14th. Please invite everyone to be part of this great occasion. And um, it's our culture as a ministry to have a number of strategic activities at the end of the year. One of them being what we call the Workers' Appreciation Dinner. This would be the first of its edition here in Abuja. And I'm glad to let you know that it will be on Friday, December the 10th. It will be our first workers' appreciation dinner for Abuja. It is strictly for workers, for those who have labored. We, it is our way of saying thank you to all who have labored in the workforce to see to it that the work of the kingdom um, the work of the kingdom makes progress and so please all heads of department take note convey that message so that we can prepare and have a time of sharing together in the presence of God tonight's message I, I want to encourage you to do two things for me number one please get tonight's message across to everyone that you truly love and can find there are people who are in desperate need to hear the things that you are about to hear tonight he said blessed are your ears for they hear blessed are your eyes for they see i want you to make it a point of duty to get it across to people especially for people who are still trusting god to come through for them in the area of finances you can do well you may not have the financial resources to give them but you can sow this seed and expect it to grow hallelujah the power to get wealth part two last week we began to discuss the subject of the economic system of the kingdom it was an attempt to help believers understand god's ways of um bringing financial abundance to his people we serve a god who is very whole in his dealings with men he does not only want us to prosper spiritually uh, he wants us to prosper all wise he says speaking by the spirit i wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth part one we looked at a few things i may just take a minute or two to recap that it is god's will for us to prosper and you must come to terms with this once and for all that god is glorified in our prosperity in fact let's take two or three scriptures before we do the recap and then we'll pick it up there's a lot to do tonight proverbs Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's start with Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We'll start from verse 11 for sake of time. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Someone will shout under the anointing now. That is a breakthrough coming for their family. I just saw that and the Lord is saying he's bringing an end to captivity for that family that is that is the word of the Lord let it be so even by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 11 beware 
that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. We're reading to 14, then we'll jump to 17. Less, when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, 14, then thy heart be lifted up, that thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth from the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, 17. And thou say in thy heart, my power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. 18 says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto your fathers as it is this day. Psalms 35, and then we'll read verse 27. Psalm 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. So we began to discuss a few things that it is God's will for us to prosper. We identified a few imbalances that when the subject of prosperity is isolated from love and passion for Jesus and from kingdom come, and the emphasis is just the satisfaction and the gratification of the flesh, then that becomes destructive. But when the subject of prosperity is incorporated as part of the overall counsel of God, the love for Jesus and passion for him being exalted above it, then it now becomes proper and it now becomes a blessing to all who learn the ways of God as touching prosperity and all who handle that reality. And we said there are a few things that we need to know as believers if we want to prosper in the kingdom. Number one, we said that all blessings come from God, remember, and belong to him. The idea of stewardship, that in this kingdom we are not owners. Owners are rebels. We do not own anything. We are only given stewardship. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. Verse 2 now. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man for. First Corinthians 4, I meant to say, from verse 1 and 2. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Number two, all blessings come from God through men to men. Please don't forget this. All blessings come from God through men to men. Nothing comes from God directly to a man. It comes from God through men to men. Even Jesus came from God through a human, Mary, to men. Are we together? Salvation came from God through the man, Jesus, to men. That means it takes God in partnership with men for the blessings and the resources of heaven to reach you. If God says yes, and the conduit, the man who should be used by God to make that yes a reality in your life, if that individual says no, that yes will only remain in the realm of the spirit. It takes the spirit and the bride to say come. When the spirit says yes, there must be a bride on earth who will echo yes. When God says, be blessed, there must be a man, a vessel, who will convey that blessing to you. And then number three, we said, wealth and abundance in this kingdom is not an achievement. Please listen carefully. In as much as there are rules and there are laws to engage, for the believer, when God blesses and prospers you, it is not an achievement, it is a trust. Very fundamental but powerful principles. 
and then we contrasted the idea of wealth from the standpoint of men of God the spiritual laws and then businessmen the natural laws or the physical laws that for a very long time there had been this divide men of God generally would say all it takes to prosper is just obey the spiritual laws and then businessmen would say don't mind the men of God just follow the business laws and you would prosper and we agreed last week that both of them have very correct perspectives but both of them are incomplete there is a place for spiritual laws and there is a place for natural laws in synergy they would produce um, a, a dimension of wealth and prosperity that can be perpetuated hallelujah and we consider the spiritual laws number one being the law of absolute or complete surrender please do not forget the first spiritual law according to our teaching is not tithing is not giving it has nothing to do with money it has everything to do with all of you that when you want to do business with god is more than a money issue the narrative that has been given in the church that when it has to do with prosperity it is all about money may not be a very accurate narrative when you want to prosper god's way it starts with all of you god is not looking for your wallet or your atm he's looking for all of you my son he says give me your heart and let your eyes attend to my ways the law of absolute surrender and then number two the law of the tithe the second spiritual law the law of the tithe a 10 percent of your, the increase of god upon your life please pay attention and then number three is the law of giving the law of seed time and harvest according to genesis 8 and verse 22 that seed time and harvest summer and winter cold and heat day and night shall not cease luke chapter 6 and verse 38 says give anything at all you give it shall be given unto you it says good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give so we know where it will come from every time we give it is through men like we agreed upon through men men will give unto your bosom with the same measure that you give that is the measure that it will return to you and um we spoke about different kinds of giving your worship offering prophets offering vows we spoke about um the, the seed faith we spoke about sacrifices and so on and so forth and then we dealt with return channels you have to please don't forget this that when you engage these spiritual laws of wealth and abundance there are return channels number one is favor with god and men favor is the ability or the the engracing of god upon a man that will cause other people to participate in your success favor with god and with men number two wisdom and i did tell us that there are two dimensions of wisdom required for wealth and prosperity number one is divine direction number two is divine strategies and then number three the blessing activated upon the life of that individual praise the name of the lord I did observe also last week we learned that the assignment of the spiritual laws please pay attention the assignment of the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance they are primarily responsible for the arrival of financial resources when you engage spiritual laws they will cause that substance and financial resources come to you but just knowing the spiritual laws alone you will not be able to perpetuate wealth because for you to truly walk in kingdom wealth you must know how to attract financial resources you must know how to manage the financial resources you must know how to multiply the financial resources that's where many people stop but there is one more you must know how to preserve the financial resources so you must know how to attract it you must know how to manage it you must know how to multiply it and you must know how to preserve it there are people who succeeded in attracting it managing it multiplying it and lost everything so you must know how to attract wealth 
manage wealth multiply your financial resources and then preserve it this will not be the only series it is line upon line precept upon precept but i want to share with you a few things today that i pray in the name of jesus that it will add to accelerating your journey to the wealthy place it will help you to be able to get to a point where you are truly truly an expression of the blessing of the lord and please do not allow anyone manipulate you into believing that you do not need financial resources in your life settle it once and for all that the absence of financial resources in your life will punish you and will impede the quality of your living the advancement of the kingdom and your potential for being a blessing you need financial resources are we together it is not money that destroys men is a heart that is not inclined towards the things of god once your heart is wrong money is like a gun if an armed robber holds that gun it is dangerous for you if a military man holds the same gun it is good for you the gun does not shoot itself it assumes the character of the holder are you learning now so if you are a wicked person money will help strengthen that wickedness if you are a kind person who loves jesus and loves people financial resources will help you we agreed also we didn't read the scripture today but last week we agreed that the rich will always rule over the poor and that the borrower will be a slave to the lender there is a relationship between wealth and influence you cannot attain a position of influence when you are poor are we together say in the name of jesus i reject poverty say in the name of jesus I reject poverty I reject lack I reject insufficiency amen so pay attention tonight God wants to clear many 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 things as always this is a proper deliverance service deliverance through transformation so open up your heart and let the fire of God's Word come and break those gates of brass and even cut those bars of iron in sunder in jesus name please don't allow anyone distract you tonight be focused on jesus and be focused on his word in jesus name let's define financial freedom i thought it was important to start tonight um, teaching by defining financial independence as you call it or financial freedom for many people they may not be comfortable using the language rich or the language wealthy because it's been misused by so many people the idea of rich for many people suggests a life of extravagance because the the pictures that have been associated with the word rich may not be the kinds of pictures that a kingdom person would want to be associated with most times when we use the word rich when you go online you would find out that it just suggests lazy people who are not doing anything wasting their time wasting their life and so once people hear the word rich um it, they, they feel guilty especially people who love jesus so i like to use the word financial independence because it looks like a more responsible word are we together now what is financial freedom or financial independence um financial look up please just because you have financial resources at your disposal does not mean you are financially independent or financially free financial independence has to do with the availability of financial resources plus the time to be blessed by it and to use it for the kingdom plus peace of mind these three things must coexist for you to be said in the kingdom to be financially free that means financial freedom has to do with the presence of abundant financial resources plus time if you have money without time life cheated you are we together remember that we said the assignment of money to you is time redemption and efficiency please go on our youtube page koinonia global and get the full teaching for last week listen to it 
you can download it archive it let it be part of your spiritual resources for your growth you can help your children help all who are around you and are under your care don't just give people money whoever is under your care should lend the ways of the kingdom are we together financial abundance plus time plus the peace of mind there are many many wealthy people who do not have peace of mind they suspect everyone they cannot sleep their, their their health is deteriorated they don't have peace it looks like the way satan grants people wealth in this kingdom or in you know the the, the world system is that the higher you rise financially the more other aspects of your life are shredded into pieces and destabilized you find out that that seems to be the narrative with the world system very wealthy people but at the expense of their joy at the expense of their family at the expense of their spiritual convictions at the expense of almost everything they lose their health they lose their peace the, many people have committed suicide as millionaires with money stashed in their bank accounts after laboring so much they thought that these monies would fill the void that only jesus can fill and in the presence of cars and houses estates and you know money flying left right and center they still found out that that void could not be filled with material things and they got into very riotous livings like solomon you know that's what happened to solomon theologically speaking it was said that he wrote the book of ecclesiastes as a falling man he had deviated from the patterns of god and the precepts given to him by his father he archived his repentance and his regret and here's what he had to say vanity upon vanity all is vanity so he's paid that price and made that mistake for us to learn that once you take jesus out of the equation frustration is imminent no matter how great and you know again we live in a social media world and a world where media seems to have such power to paint any narrative they want us to believe so we see people who are wealthy without jesus christ and they seem to look very comfortable they seem to look very happy it looks like all their lives are put together it is not true it is not true there is a void that is so large only the size of jesus can feel in a man nothing else sustains that ability now for a while the truth is that when money comes for a while you can get very happy and excited and you know you are exploring building estates but at the end of it you will find out that there is only so much you can eat there is only so much you can wear there is only so much you can drive that's why people do all kinds of uh, unbelievable things Jesus you're the cup that will run dry every other thing can run dry who is like you Lord in all the earth much less love and beauty and less work very powerful song nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the cup that will run dry hallelujah this is how we are trained in the kingdom to approach the subject of wealth and abundance it can be minus jesus there is no point in the equation of your attaining wealth that you throw jesus out no whatever requires that you throw jesus out to prosper is demonic did you hear what i said whatever would require that jesus has to be out of this system for that prosperity to come run away you don't need to pray it is demonic you can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and yet your heart is not inclined to those things can i tell you most believers have not even tasted the dimensions of wealth that god has in store for the church most of the wealth that we have tasted in the church believe me is only a test of faithfulness before jesus comes there will be such an avalanche of the blessings of the lord upon individuals but the shocking part is they will never be connected to those things their hearts and their allegiance remain to jesus 
and to Jesus only. If you are like that person, say amen. amen. You must become that person who loves Jesus with all your heart. In the midst of the estates, in the midst of the billions, in the midst of the influence, financial rest roundabout, you can sing this song with your children and say, even so, you remain Lord. Even so, you remain King. It is very surprising how many people will give up Jesus in a heartbeat for a million, for a billion, for a contract, give up Jesus for some fame. No. Hallelujah. So this is the definition of financial freedom or independence. The presence of abundant financial resources plus the time. Because you need time to really be blessed from financial resources. You need time to spend it with your children, your family, the kingdom, purpose, and then peace of mind. My highest definition of success is peace. More than progress is peace. You can have progress if you do not have peace, you are poor. I have prayed for you here in Koinonia and even in this series, it is my prayer for you again that may you never be so poor that all you have is money. May you never be so bankrupt and poor that the only thing that defines prosperity for you is financial resources. That is poverty. I taught you five levels of wealth last week, five levels of prosperity, that the first in order of priority is your spiritual prosperity. Your encounter with Jesus, your spiritual growth, conforming to the fullness of the character of the Christ in experience. Then number two, your mental prosperity. Having and sustaining superior belief systems that can be deployed to improve the quality of your life and also your assignment. Number three, bodily prosperity. The prosperity of your body and your health. Number four, financial prosperity. So what we call prosperity is only one aspect. And then number five, which is equally important, is relational prosperity. In this kingdom, you must call five over five to be said you are prosperous. If you have only finance and you lose Jesus, you lose your mind, you lose your health, you lose relationships, but you have money, you are poor. It is when your relationship with Jesus is intact, you sustain superior belief systems, your body is healthy, you have financial resources, you have rich destiny relationships, you are wealthy indeed. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Very quickly, let's get to work. The physical laws of wealth and abundance. Thank you, Jesus. The physical laws of wealth and abundance. There are so many of them, but for tonight's teaching, I will be discussing four very quickly and then we'll just tie up um, one very briefly and we're done. A dimension that most people do not know and understand about wealth. We'll just introduce it and then we'll pray. The first physical law. Now we're discussing the physical laws. Remember, I taught you, just reduce the volume a bit. Now, listen, please. I taught you that both the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance and the physical laws of wealth and abundance are all called kingdom laws. It is the same power of God that is back of their results. Is that true? That means when you engage spiritual laws, the power that makes the laws work is the power of God. When you engage the physical laws, the power that makes the laws work is still the power of God. It's just the dynamics of their operation that is different. So do not dichotomize it as if God, you go there with the realm of the spirit. Here, common sense or the universe is giving me results. There is no universe outside of God. There is, the Bible says, once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to God. So what I'm about to teach you now, the reason why it works is because the power of God is back of it. Are we together? The first physical law that governs wealth and abundance is called the law of mental transformation. Please write it down. The law of mental transformation. You want to access the blessings and the wealth of the kingdom 
haven't understood absolute surrender your tithing your giving now you want to learn how to manage to multiply and to preserve wealth the law of mental transformation that your thoughts will eventually translate to your physical reality please pay attention for a long time people in church have not been taught that their belief systems and their thinking has a relationship with their financial levels and also their destinies you hear them you, you hear the church the body of christ talk a lot about mindset but i think we've not been as extensive as we should be in helping believers understand the role that a transformed mind has to play as far as the wealth of a believer is concerned the law of mental transformation proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 let's hurry up there's so much to do it says for as he thinketh in his heart the word heart is usually interchanged for mind for as he thinketh in his heart the bible says so is he it didn't say so he will be it immediately equates your thoughts with your reality are we together now most people who desire to prosper financially speaking would not care about their their mental state and most people feel that all it takes to prosper is capital plus a business idea all it takes is just some money or somebody to help me that is not true many people have tried it again and again and it did not work your thoughts your mental state has a lot to do with your prosperity as it is in your mind so it will manifest in your life that is the truth the realities that are captured in your thoughts and your belief systems will eventually find physical expressions within your life you are your reality is a product of your most dominant thought this is true you have to believe this in genesis chapter 11 we we'll read from verse 1 to 6 genesis chapter 11 from verse 1 to 6 this was nimrod kush and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech uh-huh and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of china and they dwelt there and they said to one another goto let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they made brick for stone and slime they had for mortar verse 4 and they said they are speaking to themselves now go to let us build us a city listen carefully and a tower whose top may reach to the heavens the goal let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth now theolo theologians hold on please verse 4 theologians still argue as to whether this was a spiritual concept or there was a building physically at least the bible did not tell us this was a parable so it's safe to assume that these people meant it literally are we together so we see nimrod kush and the people proposing to themselves that we are going to build a city and a tower and we want the top to reach the skies the heavens they had not started the building they were only communicating an idea and they agreed with one another verse 5 if you're a christian please read one to read and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. One more time, verse 5. Hold on. The fact that the Lord came down meant he saw something real. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. That means it was finished already. They had not started physically. They were communicating that idea and yet in the realm of the spirit a building was rising god had to come and say who is building the power of thoughts that everything in life is built twice first in your mind and then physically if you ever try to build anything physically that is not yet built in your mind you will lose it believe me when i tell you this everything in this kingdom is built twice first in your mind and then your physical reality are we together now please put that scripture again and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded not the children of men were considering no 
as they were discussing it their minds were receiving it that womb of the mind was receiving the seed something real was growing it's not satan that came to see it it's not an angel that came to see it. god himself do you know this is an interesting scripture because holy spirit is not mentioned here satan is not mentioned here the only thing mentioned here are men and thoughts and yet the word impossible as far as limitation is concerned is also used here verse 6 hmm. and the lord said behold the people is one and they all have one language now from the earth standpoint and this they begin to do physically what has finished he said they had built it now they want to do it physically and god himself is speaking he says and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have so the name of that thing that was building in the realm of the spirit is called imagination their minds were architects building their possibilities and yet physically there was no physical building can i tell you this you don't have to move to a physical location to prosper right where you are in that one room you are constrained physically but let your mind start building tomorrow let your mind walk with the word of god and start building the next season the law of mental transformation write this down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden it will grow any seeds that are planted and watered and it will give you abundant harvest of the same i'll take it again your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden your mind is likened to a garden that is so fertile it will grow any seed the seed are the ideas that you allow failure limitations success victory that soil of your mind the moment it receives seed your mind does not have the ability to on its own reject seeds you just drop it there and it begins to grow drop discouragement it will grow drop limitation it will grow drop faith it will grow drop the victory consciousness it will grow that means you must pay attention to what you drop there or let me put it this way proverbs 4 23 let the bible speak for itself proverbs 4 23 keep your heart now you understand other versions say guard your heart with all diligence why for out of it are the issues of life out of that heart your mind are the issues of life write this down your prosperity will be in greater measure comma a product of your paradigm and philosophies more than a product of the economy that your prosperity will be more a product of your philosophy and your paradigm more than the economy that means it is not truly the economy of your territory that determines your prosperity but your philosophy and your paradigm no matter what changes in the economy if you don't change you will still remain poor no matter what remains the same in the economy if you change everything will change you see where we miss it now when you measure poverty from an economic standpoint you are speaking territorially the gdp and all of that but at an individual level the economy is not the reason why an individual is poor it is largely your philosophy your ideas are we together you prosper largely from your paradigm and your philosophies more than the economy the problem is not the economy the problem is your ideas your philosophies and your paradigm write this down if you attempt to change your life that means your physical reality without first changing your mind if you attempt to change your physical reality without first changing your mind if you attempt to change your physical reality without first changing your mind this is what will happen 
your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back to reflect the level of your thinking your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back to reflect your level of thinking if you attempt to change your physical reality without first changing your mind or your mindset your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back to default and reflect your thinking look up please um many of us here we have some of us who are pilots and so on and so forth in in aviation there is what they call the principle of cybernetics it's 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 an aviation principle it, it is a, a check and balance system to make sure that as the plane lifts it remains in its trajectory are we together now that when there is a deviation say for instance a plane lifts and is going this way there is a degree to which the plane cannot deviate beyond that level the principle of cybernetics will kick up to bring the plane back to its course are we together now that is how your mind works another example is the thermostat the thermostat of an iron as you use it to press your clothes when you put it and set it at a level the moment it gets hot beyond that level that temperature it will off this is how our mindsets are so there is a programming that says you should never have more than hundred thousand if for any reason someone blesses you with one million while you are dancing your mind interprets it as a mistake because based on that mindset it's illegal to be holding that amount i am saying that your body will start creating behaviors this is a law that will make you waste that money back to the level where your mindset says now you are proper this is why you see people no matter what money comes they keep recycling back to a particular range it is not just demons it is a law of mental transformation so you can find out someone who your mindset has pegged along a particular quality of living you have not evolved to a superior version of yourself by changing your belief systems according to the law of time and chance one miracle will happen for you this is why people win lotteries and win millions of dollars as they are dancing their mind is saying this is a mistake your mindset has the assignment of making sure your physical reality is consistent with your level of thinking anytime your physical reality is more than your level of thinking your mindset will fight that result until it brings you back the same way if your mindset is higher than your physical reality your mindset will start compelling behaviors that will move you out of that realm to the realm that is consistent with your thinking please brothers and sisters understand what i'm teaching you this is not some scientology this is scripture that means i can start from one room but i pick up my bible i pick materials of men and women and i begin who have these results and i begin to engage with the spirit i am learning the word of god listen carefully i am learning the ways of god from that one room with a cup of gary with a cup of rice a window that is leaking a roof that is leaking but i am in that room i may not go out because i don't have the physical resources to take me out of that realm but i can allow my mind to travel with the word of god to the place where i want to come to physically can i tell you this your mindset is the authorized escort that leads you to where you want to go your mindset has to go to that realm and verify then come and pick your body to that realm please pay attention to what i'm teaching you so if you want to move out of that one realm that one room for instance i'm using one room not not that there's anything particularly wrong but we desire to move to higher levels is that true so assuming you are in in a negative condition you are hungry nobody is helping you no destiny helper no nothing from that one room you are learning the law of honor from that one room you are learning relationships from that one room you are learning scriptures you are listening to a message can i tell you your mindset will start forcing you to leave that room not by looking for rent just pay attention to what i'm telling you hmm. you are in this room now watch this no helper 
no help from anywhere the holy ghost says you just give me your mindset and let's travel pay attention listen carefully what i am telling you is powerful this is how god brought us here please listen 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 please don't just shout anyhow sit down and listen this 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 night's teaching i'm teaching from the depth of my heart i want you to understand what i'm saying are we together let me tell you what will start happening because the power of god is at the back of that law that whoever gets transformed should not remain at the level that is less than his transformation it is a spiritual law even though it's a physical it, the, the law is physical in manifestation but there is spiritual power that backs it the same power that raises a cripple from the wheelchair in a crusade ground is the same power that is back of that activity so you are in one room somewhere no family members no helper you come from a family where no one has risen don't try to live a fake life we're getting there to destroy and damage this fake living you don't have to fake what can be real are you together now now you are in that one room and you are praying and listening to messages you may not be able to change your cloth nothing physical will change you are still hungry you are still looking for food there are still bills upon you but your mind is only your body that is in that realm as you begin to grow and walk with god let me tell you what will happen the power of god in partnership with your mindset will start creating scenarios that will push you out of that place you must leave that place to a level that becomes consistent with your thinking don't find don't start wasting your time asking where am i going to leave that one to the intelligence of a power that is greater than you the law of mental transformation most times we live in a world that interprets your prosperity based on the physical things you're wearing is that true how expensive is your material what kind of watch are you wearing oh this is five million wow five million that means you are rich can i tell you even if you give somebody a watch and a cloth of five million naira and his mindset is fifty thousand activities will happen around his life satan is looking for those kind of people because on legal basis he can now cooperate with the law you see how satan works satan does not just have power on his own his power is based on the loopholes in our obedience so he will cash in he becomes a destructive force that makes that law work he will come and partner with that law to make sure you retrogress down to a point where you now fit your mindset is the same thing that happens to children in school so a child grows and the father keeps telling him or the mother you are dull you are a stupid child you will not amount to anything we are poor make sure when you see other people know you are not part of them let me tell you what you are doing you are programming something in that child when that child gets to school the mindset will interpret anything he does correct as a mistake when that child fails and he brings back a poor result that result is now consistent with his mindset what most parents would do i don't mean to look down on parents and their, their approach to training children is that in anger for wasting your school fees you will fight and box and beat that child out of fear he will go back and write one exams and get 60 over 70 his mindset will say this is wrong that 60 over 70 is not consistent with the kind of thinking and sooner or later he will return back the real way to grow is to change this is powerful the law of mental transformation the moment you find yourself looking for money you have missed the law you will never find money money is not missing don't look for it it is attracted by who you are becoming more than what you do becoming is greater than doing your evolution and your transformation is greater than what you do can i tell you this you will prosper largely because of who you have become more than what you do but the people that do know their god it starts with knowledge listen carefully it says they shall be 
become then they shall do exploits it starts with knowledge transformation then action most people get it the other way around so you find many people christians what business can i do to prosper me what job can i get to prosper me you are missing it you can do 30 things you will get the same result if it's the same mindset doing them it is not the business that is failing it's the mindset that is doing the business that is making it fail are we together now that is why the wealthy are not wealthy because of the business that prospered them the wealthy are wealthy because of the mindset that made the business they are doing to prosper every business that you are you are failing at someone is succeeding at the difference is not the business is the mindset when you have a car and you drive that car to a ditch don't blame the car the car was supposed to obey every direction you take it to so if your incompetence as a learner takes it tells the car to go to the left it will obey you when you see that car hitting the tree police does not arrest the car they arrest you because the problem is not the car the problem is the driver that driver is your mindset are, are you learning now please come minister Kyle. they just come for a moment let me just use you for an example watch this This body you see, everybody look up and learn. This body you see is only an instrument of execution. This body does not have a will of its own. Anything you see the body do that translates to the result of your destiny is only obedient to your mindset. If I take my hand and I slap this man, the hand is innocent. It is the mindset that told the hand to slap. Are we together now? if i take a gun and i go to kill the gun is innocent the mindset instructed the body to hold the gun till it kills because it believes it cannot prosper by dignity so your body is only a slave to your thinking when a man slaps his wife and beats the wife there is a mindset that teaches you that if you beat the living daylight out of your wife she will respect you maybe it came from culture so your body becomes a slave to that thinking now let's assume god forbid but let's assume this man is an armed robber shoot this armed robber and let him fall to the ground let's also assume that there is another man standing here come you sit back at your keyboard eh? watch this let's assume this man is a pastor shoot two of them when they fall down do you call this an armed robber dead body do you call this a pastor dead body so who was really the pastor and who was really the armed robber not the bodies they are all called dead bodies now watch this let's assume this man is an armed robber there is a mindset making him to steal to kill and to destroy it this man is a pastor there is a mindset making him to preach the gospel and to love jesus christ by the time this man gets saved he can come here and the once armed robber suddenly changes. His body did not change. His face did not change. His voice did not change. The only thing that changed was his spirit and his mindset. So when you want to change men, what do you really change? So why have you been focusing on changing clothes and changing cars and changing jobs? It looks like the obvious problem but it is not the right one you have changed every other thing except the real thing that needs change can i tell you when everybody is wrong is proof that the problem is your lens of sight your mindset is someone learning so when the holy spirit comes and wants to build you he will not give you capital for a business you see some of those prayers we are praying is the mercy of god that is making that prayer not to be answered because god does not want you to waste money god if you can just give me five million in this abuja i promise you you don't even need to come and help me again you just give me five million and i will use the brain god gave. and you see in god's mind all you are saying is lord mercy i don't even know what i'm saying i'm confused but i need help and he comes to you he gives you a book and he gives you a message go and meet somebody who is struggling financially and give him a teaching and say can you listen to this he said no you are wasting my time all i need is money and you are telling him i want to help you i shared it last week this man can remove this beautiful attire he's wearing 
not to insult we pray that god transforms them but you go to the outskirts of the city where you meet all these rough boys again you know what is rough about them right it is not the body always remember this body has always been obedient it is the mindset that told the body to smoke it is the mindset that told the body to sleep under a bridge it is the mindset that told the body to go and look for where there is something to smoke the body is innocent remove this same cloth and give those boys to wear in one week their mindset will tell on the cloth this cloth is clean it did not iron itself the body did not make it happen is the mindset that told the body to be sure that it's is neatly dressed so all of the confusion around our lives we blame our bodies we blame all of this it is our refusal to be transformed this is not just for your finance it's for your life we've dealt with the subject of mindsets we come from different cultures we come from different backgrounds we've gone through different levels of whatever it is again if this man has never experienced favor in his life let's assume that he came respectfully speaking from a polygamous family and he went through all kinds of things he failed he did 10 years to finish primary school eight years to finish secondary school another 10 years to finish university by the time he comes for koinonia and i say favor his mindset rejects that prayer because that has not been captured in his reality if i say diligence to work hard he will say amen because that's what he knows if i say favor he wants to say amen but his mind is saying what is favor it will scan the archive of your destiny and say there's no such thing as that so don't receive it are we together can i tell you if you are here to get a job thank god because you have the time to change quickly so that by the time that job comes is the renewed is the enlightened version of you that is admitted there most people complain and waste time and sit from morning till night blaming god blaming parents blaming wealthy people and blaming serious people for their conditions this is only the first law now this is where i have a problem with the imbalance teaching that just give and your life will change it's not true you you are seeing it now right because there are many people who as they are putting their hands to give the realm of the spirit is ready to bring you the favor but the level of mental transformation that can take that favor and translate it to a blessing is not there so spiritual blessings keep coming in a bag that is full of holes listen to me it was not oil and a vessel that was equal to profit it was oil and plenty vessels when the prophet diagnosed her situation he said the problem is not the oil the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it if the vessel is small the oil will look small he said madam go and borrow vessel enlarge your capacity that anointing it is not your tithes that is not working it is not your giving that is not working it is the vessel through which the answer is coming even if rain falls from morning till night and it's only a cup you have outside if we are to use the rain based on the size of your cup we'll say it only drizzled whereas it was a, an avalanche it's just your cup that made it look like it is not raining are we blessed when i found this principle i began to rejoice i made up my mind that i won't fake anything brothers and sisters drink your gary with honor don't rush the season in your life now because you will miss it you will look for it and not find it again it will take a telescope to look back and say where am i coming from transformation that is lasting wealth that does not fail that's why you see wealthy people even when they lose money or lose whatever it is it doesn't really bother them because the moment they lose money their mindset kicks in and says it's a mistake you shouldn't be poor and the holy spirit will start working with that mind to find a way of bringing you back do you believe what 